Hey guys, welcome to the video. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing the Reedon Dreamstick Bar. Uh, I ordered this last week and um, it's arrived. Unfortunately, we've not had the best wind so far. Well, we have had some good wind, but unfortunately I've, I've not been able to get out because of the little one. So I'm hoping the uh, forecast will change soon and we'll be able to get out and uh, have a kite and get this thing on the water. Um, I've also ordered the supermodel kite as well, um, 12 meter. So I'll probably be doing a independent review of that kite, um, probably with the bar, I guess, at the same time. So yeah, today I thought I'd just go through some of the features that I first saw when I received it. Um, I've been riding the, the Nash Dash kites and the Nash Talk bar um, for the last three years. And I haven't really been the happiest with the Nash bar because it's there's been some sort of critical issues I've found with the design that's led to increased wear of some of the parts. Um, they've got a nil nilotron insert that you have to replace, um, so that was a bit annoying. Um, and yeah, I just opened this bar now and I can see they've made some big changes. I guess they've probably brought in a few of the ideas that, you know, because both of them were from Nash before, but it's good to see they've sort of honed in on all the issues that they've had in the past and um, sort of redesign the bar to eliminate some of those problems. So yeah, I thought we'd just sort of go through a um, bit of an overview of it, uh, top to bottom. And then yeah, in the next video, I'll probably try and get out on the water and I'll probably be reviewing this kite as well. Okay, now we've got it all unraveled and everything. Um, let's start to go through some of the features. So I'm gonna start off with looking at the top of the lines. Um, so you can see here, um, they basically had a really good idea um, and come up, well, I think there's some other bars on the market that have this as well, but they've thought about putting some detachable pigtails um, with the like loops onto the end of all the lines. Um, and they're just sort of attached on like that. So you can see it's pretty, pretty easy. And what this allows is for you to replace the end of these lines when they become worn out. Now, I've had a whole heap of issues on my old bars where these Lux knots weren't done very well and they, they become very weak. And then you're sort of thinking the whole time you're kiting, is it gonna snap when I'm doing a kite loop or something like that? So this is really nice. So moving down, uh, you can see, yeah, they ended with a little loop there. And then these lines are actually made by cousin, Trezatech. Um, they're called MEL flying lines that came with the bar. So you can see there. Came with the bar like that. Um, they say on their videos and everything so far that these lines are pre-stretched and they're not prone to stretching or I guess shrinking, because I was always under the impression that kite lines shrink, they didn't stretch. Um, but I guess we'll only know once we get it out in the water. But I think yeah, even with the um, the pigtails, you know, you can adjust your, your line lengths there if you end up needing to have to anyway. So really good idea with that. Um, they also come prepared with a two meter extension. So you can see here, um, see here the little extension pieces and they just go on and off like that. Um, and that's pretty cool because it allows you to, you know, put your kite up with with 22 meter lines, um, you know, and then you can you can change them out to to the 24s with the two meter extensions. Um, so that's that's pretty cool because it's always fun to try and play around with shorter kite lines. And I know um, some of the standard bars just come with one fixed length. Um, so it's quite a good idea. And, and also, you know, you've also got another spot where you can change out any wearing bits as well, which is cool. So moving on down all the lines, which I'm sure are gonna be a nightmare to put it back after this video is done. Uh, but we get down to the bar itself. So the bar, actually, I'm gonna do something quickly. So, so the bar itself, uh, it's super, super thin, um, very similar to the 
sort of niche design with these with these ribs to fit your pants. Um, I think it's, it actually feels smaller than the old niche bar, which is really nice. Um, and the other big thing I've noticed straight away is they've got both the center lines coded, so you're gonna eliminate any wear there. And they've also come up with a cool design of this sort of, I guess it's aluminum, um, sort of insert there to, you know, just to stop any rubbing as well. So you're not gonna get any wear out of there. And that, that's really cool because there was a massive issue on, I know a lot of bars that use the ropes um, and they have like a, like a plastic insert or, or that kind of design and they end up just wearing all the time. When, you, when you're sheeting in and out, um, it's just gonna it's just gonna wear away. So that's really cool to see they've come up with that design. Um, coming down from the center lines, it comes into this plastic little, I guess, line splitter. Um, and then your middle, middle rope goes through the bottom of that. This looks like it's been made, um, I guess I guess it's like a composite plastic material. Um, seems seems pretty hard and I, I guess it's been you know, preloaded and everything to make sure it's not gonna to break or anything like that. So we'll have to test and see how that goes. So moving down to the splitter, um, you've got two lines coming down into your like line splitter, I guess, and your non-safety line has a little plastic coating over the top of it to avoid any wear to that line as it goes into the splitter. And on the underside of it, there is a small little clip, I guess, that hold, that circles around the lines and then it gets held into uh, the, the line splitter itself. That's a really cool design because I think it's gonna stop a lot of any wear forming there um, and you've made a really good anchor point into this part and the way the way that's shaped I really can't see that breaking at all um, all the force is going upwards and yeah it's reinforced and everything like that so I think that is going to work really well um, then we're moving moving down from there so the safety line comes through your splitter as well and that keeps coming down and then we get to your cleat and your sort of flag outline, I guess. So the cleat looks like it's a normal clam cleat from the same company that makes the mole. Kind of see that there. Most of you are pretty familiar with that. Um, then you sort of got a Velcro D-Power strap. So it's an up above the bar D-Power, um, which I'm used to, so I'm, I've not really a bit of an issue with that at all. Um, and then, yep, so that would work just by pulling that down and it gets caught in the cleat and then it doesn't come back up. So pretty sure everyone's familiar with that. But the cool thing on this side um, is the, the flag outline goes through a safety system and that's that can fully rotate down there, which in turn twists that bit down there. Um, and you've got a Velcro attacher for your D-Power onto there, so that kind of keeps it out of the way and keeps it clean. You've got an adjustable bar reach, so you can adjust that with the small Allen key on the front there, and that can be brought down to reduce the throw of the bar. Um, if you've got you know shorter reach, then that's really a cool way to adjust that for you. So next we come down and we can see the steering lines have Basically, the same kind of idea as what they put on the top of the steering line. That's a pretty standard feature on most bars. They've got the, the sort of the bar le um, length adjusted down here. Uh, looks quite different to the other brands. Um, that allows you to adjust the length of your bar. So if you've got your bar set with the wider length, then the kite's gonna turn faster um, with the same amount of input as if you had it set with the shorter length. Um, so that's kind of good because it gives you the option to use the bar for, you know, for different sort of all sort of different conditions. Um, it's pretty standard though, and most um, manufacturers and companies have that sort of design now. So I just wanted to cover this bit in a little bit more detail. After I pulled it out, I realised that the line settings um, that come down from the steering lines on the on the longer pigtails, I guess, um, have your adjusters there, so you can adjust. Um, the line length like you would do normally um, by under the floats. Um, but yeah, the, by using a separate Larks knot um, in your bar length adjuster, um, it allows you to replace that 
that section if you get anywhere, which which is a qu quite a cool little feature, and I just wanted to point that out again. We've also got the little bungee strips that go over the front of the lines, um, and then this also this looks like it's pre made, I guess, with a with a fold on the insert there to you know let it sit nice and tidy when it's all packed away. Have to see how that goes. Um, see what the reliability is like on this. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the design so far. So moving down the bar, um, you can see you've got your middle lines coming onto your cleat, and then you've got your separate flag out line, which I mentioned before, your two outside lines coming in. And then what happens is you've then got your both your main flag outline and your I guess main to power line um, they're coated in plastic and then they go through the bar and that's really cool because it's going to eliminate all sorts of wear from that happening I've, I've snapped flag outlines center lines and everything on my old bars because they've just got the plastic on the insert on the way it was designed before um, on my niche bar it would just yeah it would catch and it would just wear out and then these bits would just um, basically break, I'd say, and I was getting about a year out of them. And I, I, you know, once I worked out what the problem was, I was obviously replacing the insert. But you know, that was twenty five quid every time. You know what I mean? And it's really nice to see they've they've obviously seen that issue and then come up with a much better way of um, having the lines, you know, coated for a start and then going through this nice clean aluminium sort of splitter to eliminate anywhere. Um, so that's really cool. And then as you get down to the bottom of the center center lines that go sort of uh, through the bar or sorry your flag out line and your um your deep power line you've then got the new chicken loop and that has a open ceramic bearing uh, you can get a nice little close-up on there so you can see there the little bowls are open so that should work pretty well there's no oil or grease or anything like that you know the sand will get in there but you know because it's all open and they've Purposely, I think they've left out quite a number of uh, ball bearings. Um, you can see this side here. See some missing. The sand will get out of that really, really easily. Um, so I don't think that's going to be an issue either. I think they only have these on the core bars from memory, but yeah. Um, yeah, then moving on from that, the flag outline is a sort of a, like a bungee style flag outline which is really cool and then that actually goes into your I don't know they made like a little clip here um, and that feeds through there really easily as well so yeah taking this whole thing off um, it looks like they've come up with a really nice little way of securing everything um, and you're not gonna again they've thought about this really well because you're not gonna get anywhere on this part at all um, you know with kiting you you know, as much as you want your bar to last more than a year, um, you know, if you're kiting every day, you know, sometimes you don't get to wash down your stuff all the time. You're always going to get sand in there, and the sand is just a natural wearing um, sort of material. So it, you can really see, they've obviously seen these issues over all their years of kiting, um, and yeah, they've come up with some really good ideas there. This, this um, safety system, it's just like the standard. Standard new type, you've got a couple of bungee cords um, in there as well. So one goes over the safety, and then you've got another black one that goes up over there. And with the box, um, they give you a couple of spare parts for it as well, which is, so moving back onto the chicken loop, yeah, you've got this nice big um, cabrina sort of clip thing that you can go through there, and then you can Clip that back in, and then you know you've you've now got your suicide mode as well on your bar. Um, so that's really cool. So yeah, I mean, the first thoughts, guys. I mean, this bar they've obviously thought a lot about it, um, and yeah, I, I can't really wait to get it on the water. To be honest, with the kite, and um, yeah, give it a go. I mean, I've just noticed that as well. They've they've made a little plastic covering over here as well. So they obviously Yep, and you can see there, that's where that would rub on the inside of 
the bearing. Um, so they've thought about that as well, you know, and the amount of detail that has gone into this bar, it really is, um, well, we're in 2020 now, eh? So, so yeah, hopefully um, we get some nicer weather soon and some stronger winds and yeah, we can get out and give a review. So hope you've liked the video so far, guys. Um, and yeah, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I can answer them all, ask a question. Um, and yeah, you'll soon be seeing a lot more videos of the reading stuff on my channel. Cheers. Peace out.